Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Phoenix, Arizona, it's time for Phoenix Business Radio, spotlighting the city's best businesses and the people who lead them. Welcome to Tales, Fails, and Ales, where we drink ales and tell tales about fails. <laughs> I'm your host, Kyle McIntosh, representing Max 6 a company dedicated to the success of entrepreneurs and sharing their stories. Our hope is by allowing these leaders to share their biggest fuck-ups, vulnerability, and liquid courage brought to you by local Tempe company, Crush Craft Cider. <laughs> we can all believe that our greatness is always just on the other side of adversity. Today, we are joined by Jody Lowe, founder and CEO of UN Improved, and Thomas Barr, executive director of Local First Arizona. Cheers, guys. Cheers. <laughs> Jody, I'd like to hear from you first. Uh, what is you and Improved? So you and Improved is a leadership development uh, training company. We work with any any size company, really from Fortune 100 to small businesses and really everything in between um, all across the, uh, the U.S. as well as Canada now and Mexico. And we basically work with teams and organizations to help really dig deep into heart-based leadership, helping companies really realize what matters most, um, helping their leaders and emerging leaders uh, come from a different space and place than just uh, managing, but rather really truly leading from the heart. So you said two kinds of different things there. Yes. The initial, the initial what you and improved is, and then you got yes. into heart-based leadership. Yes. Can you tie those th two things together and mm -hmm. are they the same thing or two sides of the, the same coin or how things, do people hear things different ways or are they two different things? The leadership development, heart-based leadership. To, to me, they're, they're, they're different. And, and I guess our approach is what makes it unique in, in terms of at least how I think of it or, or see it. So there's, there's plenty of companies that have leaders and, and great leaders. There's plenty of companies that lack leadership and, and just run from, from a fear-based place or something, you know, Unlike that, the companies that we partner with are all um, what, what makes them similar or, or cut from the same cloth is the mindset of the leadership. So companies that believe our people are our biggest asset. We invest in our people because we want them happier at home. So they're happier at work and vice versa. Our whole philosophy is really to better develop the individual so that they're a better member of their communities, whether that's their their teams at home, their teams at work, both, and be able to contribute more to society as a whole because they're they're coming from a different mindset, mindset, headspace, and heart space than, you know, just punching a clock and doing a job. They're they're wanting to lead from a different different place because they have different values and importance that they they place on things. If I so I'm going to get into why you care about this and mm -hmm. what makes it important in your mm -hmm. purpose. But for if I'm a business leader, why do I care? Yeah. If my people are a part of the community, yeah. are happy at home, other than mm -hmm. being friends with someone or, you know, the personal connection, why do I care if someone's happy at home? If I'm looking at a business as a bottom line, we've got to be financially successful. Absolutely. So the, the two, probably the two biggest things that I hear from from almost every uh, CEO or owner of a, of a firm that I work with or we work with is the the things that they struggle with the most are retention as well as attracting new talent. So in today's business game, if you will, those are the, the tough spots. How do we attract great talent? What makes us unique? What makes us special? Younger, The younger generation, the millennials and beyond are looking for organizations and companies that believe in them, that um, they want to be a part of something. They want something that's cause-based. They want to have a purpose and know that they're contributing to something larger than than just themselves or, or just the bottom line. They, they want to feel that they're making an impact. So um, so that's one thing is what sets them apart and what can attract that great talent. And when you invest in people um, with life skills and people skills and leadership skills that go beyond just the framework of, of the business and they can apply that to all areas of their life, that's that's certainly attractive. For the companies as well, in retaining new talent, again, with, with where we are with unemployment and, and how the numbers are right now, to, to not only uh, attain but really retain that great talent what's going to make them stay? And what we hear time and time again, and I, I can't remember what the most recent statistic, I want to say it was 80 plus percent of folks that um, when they were asked, why did they leave the company or organization that they were working with? They cited lack of appreciation, lack of connectivity, lack of caring. When you invest in people, there's a, a tangible bottom line ROI on it. That's maybe not the easiest thing to measure, but 
you know, I have a, a, a dear friend and client who had sent me a, a letter unsolicited many, many years ago now who had said, you know, it's interesting. And this is in the automotive space. But she said, you know, in our dealership, we've sent parts, we've sent service, we've sent sales all through your training. It's the only thing that we did differently this year. And our gross revenue went up over, I think it was 200, I want to say 212% with 0% turnover. Now, in, the, in that space, 0% tur- turnover is a big, big thing. So again, when people feel a part of something and, wow, you cared enough about me to invest in me and you want me to be a better human, you want me to be a better husband, wife, spouse, you know, significant other parent, that's, that's when people say, wow, you care enough and I, this is something I want to be a part of. That all makes sense. (laughs) (laughs) See you later. (laughs) And see. (laughs) So I didn't say it before, but I'll ask questions. Feel free to jump in. Yeah, Um, certainly. So let me come back to you, Jody, on why you personally care. And I think there's a lot we could hear that came out of that of where you're coming from. Yep. But let me come back to asking you specifically about that. Sure. And And Thomas, so you didn't start local first. No. But you're obviously drawn to it. What is it? And how did you come to be so engaged with it? Yeah. So <clears throat> what is it? Uh, Local First Arizona, put it simply, is um, an organization that empowers um, a diverse and inclusive economy. And we do that by championing locally owned businesses to strengthen the Arizona, strengthen the Arizona economy. The importance of Local First Arizona is all around us in that we are getting people excited about living here uh, by connecting them to locally owned businesses, uh, making people proud of living in Arizona. I think anybody can attest to the change in that over the last 15 years. Uh, If you've been in Arizona, you've felt that difference. But we also want to strengthen local businesses and help them stay competitive in very unbalanced markets that they operate. So we do a lot um, with the business community to ensure that consumers are connecting to local businesses and also those businesses are thinking creatively and innovatively about how they're growing and building themselves. I did not start it. I did not start an organization when I was 17 years old. (laughs) (laughs) There are those rock stars out there, but I was not one of them. What Local First Arizona stands for is exactly what I've always wanted to do. I was that weird, awkward kid that wore Arizona t-shirts and everybody made fun of me because they couldn't wait to leave after high school and college. And I was always proud of proud of being here. And there's also this thing about the organization that is very much, it's hard to put it into words, but I, I tell <clears throat> the relation between this a lot of the time. Um, if you've ever seen School of Rock, the movie, oh, yeah. and there's the scene where Jack Black is saying, uh, he's talking to the kids and he's saying, you know what, the whole world is run by the man. (laughs) And he runs MTV and he took uh, Shamu and put him in a chlorine tank and blah, blah, blah. And he's talking about all these things in society where big conglomerate, massive things have just ruined our culture and our society and all these different things. And what Local First Arizona comes in and does in, in our community is says, we're not, we're going to stand up to the man who is big, massive companies who are making, who are extracting dollars from our community. And we come into the community and we say, you know what, we need to empower locally owned businesses because those businesses are the ones that are here. They're the ones that care about this place. They make people connected to this place. They offer unique, rich cultural things that the big, massive companies just cannot do and will not ever do because they're not here. And so when I heard about Local First Arizona back seven or eight years ago, um, I was just naturally drawn to it. I said to myself, like, oh, my oh, my God, I can't believe this exists. This is everything that I've always wanted to do. So I've been with the organization six years now, became executive director about a year ago and couldn't be happier. So fighting for Arizona's Shamu. Yeah, yeah, there you go. New tagline. I love it. I'm going to change my Twitter. Like, <laughs> what? So, I, we all nodded when you said it of the difference in the last 15 years in Arizona. And it's both a perception and a very real thing that has changed. Mm-hmm. What? Can you put words to that? I mean, because we all nodded, we all kind of get it. Mm-hmm. But for if, if someone's listening from out of state or someone just moved here or someone, I mean, yeah, I, I think we all kind of nod a lot yeah. when we hear that. 
but no one puts specific words to it. I think you have a unique perspective to be able to like, what is different in the last 15 years? Arizona's infrastructure, I think, is very much built for us to be disconnected. Growing up in the suburbs, it's very easy or it, it's very difficult to walk or bike anywhere that's close to you just based off of how things are built. And I know I'm talking about the valley specifically, but it's like this way in lots of communities throughout um, Arizona. And um, I think that in itself um, has made people who grew up here less connected wherein they are not connected, they want to leave because there's nothing rich and, and cultural here that they feel connected to that they want to give back to or be a part of. And what's what I think has changed a lot in, in that is that <clears throat> we've given opportunity and provided space for rich cultural entrepreneurs to start businesses, um, build those businesses and connect with the people that are in our communities that have, have been here for a long time and have wanted those things. And we've realized, oh, wow, like this is what a great community can be and is, is when we actually invest in the businesses that are here rather than just building infrastructure that brings in massive chains. We know that the growing market of millennials, as you mm-hmm. brought up earlier, want different things, want different experiences, want unique things. And it's not just them that want it. It's it's everybody wants unique experiences. We just kind of forgot about it along the way as we tend to think that cheaper and more convenient is always better. But as we see certain chain businesses start to close down across the country, we're realizing, oh, it's because they're not offering those super unique experiences that people really, really want. Um, And so I think what's changed is that we've come to a realization that we have to invest in ourselves if we want to have the things that make our communities good and great. And part of those good and great things are the businesses that are here. I mean, if you could imagine a community where the only thing you had are chain stores, that would, I mean, I don't think anybody would want that, you know? That's a weird <laughs> utopian future. No yeah, know, exactly. Right? No, <laughs> no. Like you don't talk to anyone. You just go into the store and you walk out, like, you know? And so uh, I think it's those relationships, those experiences, the people that we know and we love and we're here with. It's like cheers, you know? Mm-hmm. It's walking to that place and knowing the people. I mean, how relevant, right? <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> cheers. <laughs> oh, we got to clink glasses on that one. That was just too perfect. It's walking to a place and knowing the person that owns it. It's sitting next to the guy that owns the business next door to that. And and if we lose that, then we lose, I think, what a lot of people um, really wants this country and this state and, and this local community to be. So mm-hmm. that's my long answer. That's, that's great. I'll, one one comment, and then I'll get into questions again. I, I've lived in my house for the last four years. We bought it because the neighbors in the neighborhood, in the street, had furniture in their front yard. Mm. They spend time in their front yard and spend time outside nice. and with each other and they don't just go into the garage. And yeah. how unique in yeah. this like changing demographic yeah. and changing yeah. uh behaviors of you know, Arizona or you know, lots of different places where people just are disconnected from each other yeah. and mm-hmm. how important that is, even at, you know, the individual, the home, the business, whatever. It's this connectivity is really what we all crave and mm-hmm. brings us meaning in life. Yeah. And so any way that we can do that, I, I totally yeah. get it. Well, I'm just going to share ahead. one thing that just is coming to my mind in terms of what all all three of us do and, and you two specifically and so beautifully. If you look at now, even, you know, the, the largest coffee chain and company, you can now order online, pick it up. You don't have to talk to yeah. a soul. Yeah. Yet, like to your point, Kyle, you know, we are craving that. We do crave the, hey, how are you? Do you want the same latte with your da-da-da on the side? And like, it makes you feel special and like mm-hmm. someone cares. And, mm-hmm. you know, certainly with the community at Max 6 too, it's like, oh, how do we all lock arms and cross the finish line together and create a community and socially cause-based? So I, I just, you know, it just makes me think of, yes, and what you said, Thomas, you know, we convenient and cheaper is... is it, it, is that nice at times? Yeah, maybe, you know, for, for certain circumstances, but is that really the society we want to create and build and and foster for our kids and their kids? And, you know, it's, it's, it's a different mindset. I have a question for Kyle really quickly. Do you know the biggest deterrent of crime in any community? Community? Yeah. Uh, Well, I mean, like, no, like specifically, like what deters crime more than anything else? No. Neighbors knowing each other. 
Oh, Isn't that crazy? Wow. It's not more police. It's not more this. It's not more that. It's if you know the people that live next to you. Okay, so That's every cool. every single tour we give, I'm pointing out to our co-working space mm-hmm. right now, this big open space, and there's all these, there's 30 companies or so that mm-hmm. work out here. And if they're new to it, they say security comes up, right? Like I've got my computer here. I've got my my stuff, my secure, you know, all my equipment, whatever it is. <laughs> microphones. A microphone, <laughs> my recording equipment, my <laughs> studio. How do you protect against that? It's like, well, we have cameras. We have two. But it's people knowing each other mm-hmm. and knowing who's in the space and looking out for each other mm-hmm. and being a part of this community and saying, not like, hey, why are you here? You don't belong. But like, hey, how can I help you? Yeah. And like, the best way that we can all look out for each other is that. That makes mm-hmm. total yeah. sense. Yeah. I don't know if you were in the session at the Good Business Summit that we had last month with Ravine from the Daba. Yep. When he talked about how he doesn't lock his office ever or his safe or anything. Like his employees know like this is always going to be open. And he built that trust with the people that he hires. And they care for each other because of that. It's so cool. That's very so, cool. Yeah. Absolutely. Very cool. So, all right, before we get into the why you personally care, I just thought of something because you, Jody, Mm -hmm. are running a business out of Arizona. Yep. I know you work with businesses, Arizona-based businesses Mm -hmm. and larger businesses that have a footprint, you know, across the country. Sure. Is there anything specific about why you're running your business in Arizona? Anything unique about why it's important to be doing so what you see about you know cool reasons that it really makes it something different here absolutely so i've lived here first and foremost since i was five years old so the the obviously the large majority of my life. So Arizona is home. This is what I know. This is what I love. The more I travel, which I love to travel, the more I love to come home. <laughs> um, the ease, the convenience, the weather, everything about it. I absolutely love it here. I can't envision myself elsewhere. That said, it's it's interesting that you asked that question because oftentimes it's like, well, gosh, what's next for you and improve? Do you want a franchise? Do you want to take it out of state? My vision has always been why can't I bring more people to Arizona? We are such a beautiful destination. You can go to conferences and events in any big city, but we have this gorgeous weather year round. Yes, it's hot in the summer. I get that. However, when you're coming to a leadership training or conference, you know, that doesn't matter. You've got beautiful resorts and spas. And and so as companies look for great places to to help their people, to grow their teams, to, to create a better culture, why not bring them to a beautiful place and make it this wonderful experience all around? So for me, um, yes, we take our training out of state, you know, when when that is necessary. But gosh, 90 percent of what we do is all done in Arizona, drawing people from around uh, North America to us, which we love. Back to the 15 years and how things have changed. Do mm-hmm. you feel like you have an opportunity to show people from all over the place what Arizona has to do? offer i mean beyond just wow i have to shovel my driveway when i go home (laughs) this is amazing (laughs) yeah i do hear it often with clients from uh, out of state that when you know they start sending their teams here that they're they're not as familiar with arizona or haven't been um it's it's unanimous across the board, like, wow, you get to live here. You know, what an amazing place. And one of the things I hear often too, which I'm sure you do too, Thomas, is the people here are so friendly. Mm. Everybody's so warm and inviting in Phoenix and in Scottsdale. And, you know, so that always is just, you know, a point of pride for me because I think that we are a very welcoming uh, community. And yes, we've got, you know, spring training and all of these things that that draw people, but, you know, literally 12 months out of the year, there it's it's a pretty dang amazing place to to be. You know, it is our, cool. mm-hmm. our, our micro version of this is I'm all in on Arizona mm-hmm. and we just happen to be located in Tempe. Yeah. And people keep asking us, all right, Max six, are you what's next? Scottsdale, Gilbert. Mm-hmm. So we're just going to keep going east down Broadway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Broadway. Broadway's our spot. <laughs> That's great. All right. So Jody first, yeah. we got into what is you and improved? Mm-hmm. Why should a business owner, someone putting their employees and a a person going through one of your courses, why should they care? Mm -hmm. Why do you care? Mm -hmm. No bullshit. Like, why do you care Mm -hmm. about doing what you do that gets you out of bed where you could be doing? I know you. I know how motivated and talented and all this stuff that you are. Like, you could do anything. Why are you doing this? I love people. I truly, from my heart, I love people. I love watching people win. I love people to be happy and joyful and I think it stems from a piece of me that 
I just believe we have such a finite amount of time. As far as I know, we only have one go at this whole life thing. So to me, it's like, why wouldn't you want to live your best life? Why wouldn't you want to get out of bed excited for the work that you do? Wouldn't Why wouldn't you want to like the people that you work with and create something magical and big together? So I am not the right fit for many organizations out there, and I am completely okay with that because the ones that get it and the ones that you know, it, it's 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 like those Orbit gum commercials where it's like, ding, you know, the little like sparkle on the tooth. Like, I, I get you. You know, you've got the little Orbit thing. It's like that. It's like this magic of, yes, yes, I love this because my people are everything and they're they're more important than my customer. It's not the customer's always right. It's about my employees because this is my family and I care that much about them. And it's it's not about punching a clock. It's about they have lives and families and and things that matter and and there, there are everything. So, so to me, I guess that's my very long answer is I absolutely love people. I believe that they deserve to live whatever it is that they want for their lives and for their families and to be able to create that. And if I can be a small part in helping not only the individuals, but the organizations and the culture shift to realize that, that, that their people are their biggest asset, then, then I'm fulfilled. Before I ask you the same question, Thomas, one last question on this. I know having been through two of your courses and, and, uh, two of your experiences yes. and, and, uh, <laughs> uh, being involved just through Sam, my wife and, and your teen leader yes. course. Yes. Can you speak to that? And maybe it's just a deeper dive on exactly what you said, or mm-hmm. maybe it's something else, but what, that's such a unique thing mm-hmm. and such a unique experience and such a unique opportunity for the teens that are going through that course. Yeah. Uh, is that a different motivation or is it just more of the same that you just spoke to? You know, it's, it's twofold. I, it, like we were talking about what, what these, these younger folks and the, the next generations, what they need and want it, that lights me up because that's how, that's how I think, <laughs> you know, I think, I think, they they're looking for this purpose and this cause and and living a very fulfilled life not just you know staying with one company for 50 years and getting pensions and you know they they want to be a part of something so when we started the teen program um it came off of the heels of of so many years of adults saying if i would have gone through this you the leader class when i was a young person I can't even imagine what decisions I would have made differently or how different life would have been. And after I heard that enough, I'm like, okay, we, we've got to do something for, for high school age kids. So when we launched you, the teen leader, what I didn't, what I didn't see the, the, I guess what I, yeah, the, the big upside that I didn't see was when I first announced it, it was a graduation that I was like, Hey, we're going to do you, the teen leader for 14 to 18 year olds. And three different people stood up and said, Jody, I'd like to sponsor a teen. I'd like to sponsor a teen. It's, it's been that impactful for me, my business, my company, my family. And I was just blown away. So then that led to, well, gosh, what if I could create a foundation to help local teens, teens, you know, have this experience to be able to set them on a great path. And I don't care what walk of life they came from. I actually want as much diversity in that classroom. And that's why we partner with some great nonprofits and organizations to find amazing kids that, you know, this can completely change the trajectory of their future by feeling empowered, not just in a two and a half day scenario, but, you know, I, I got this, you know, and yeah, I don't, I, you know, my circumstance doesn't determine, you know, where I'm headed in the future. And, you know, I've got the confidence and conviction and belief to, to, you know, lead a big badass life, you know? So, so yeah, I guess it, it, it is similar to, to why I do what I do on, on, you know, the adult side of things, but my gosh, if we can, you know, make a, a tangible footprint with young people, you know, what is, what does the future look like? We've got empowered leaders, you know, running, running the world. I mean, in a small <laughs> microcosm of it, but where could that go and who do they affect in their lives? It, I'll, I'll tell you what. Going through the leader course and being in the cor- one of the courses during the year that goes through with the teen group, mm-hmm. I mean, it's a very powerful experience going through the leader course. Mm-hmm. And you are looking internally, and you're learning about others, and you're bringing each other up, and you're 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 on hills and valleys and bringing yourself up. Yeah. And and uh, I'll be damned though if seeing that teen group and where they started and why'd you take my cell phone away? And I yeah. don't want to, you know, all this stuff or whatever <laughs> totally. to tears and helping each other and bringing it. I mean, what, there was such a cool experience of yeah. just seeing like exactly what you just said of why are we not starting so much earlier? So mm-hmm. 
much more often as yeah. opposed to we get into the workplace and then it's like, well, now we're responsible for this group of people we brought in as right. leaders. Right. Let's start now. And well, and, and we, you know, I have to tell you this too. We, we have such an epidemic of, um, you know, in, in, we can blame it on social media. We can blame it on a lot of things, but you know, there's a lot of kids out there that feel less than and not enough. And, and I will tell you that we haven't had a teen class to date where I have not heard firsthand from at least two, if not more kids that have talked about cutting suicide attempts. And there was one boy, and this is so ingrained in my mind because this was a couple of years ago now, who stood up in front of a couple hundred people at a graduation and said these exact words, which were, this class will do one of two things. It will either change your life or save your life. And this class saved my life. And from that moment on, I was like, we are doing the right work in this world because if it's one kid or dozens or hundreds, what, you know, that's, that's what gets me fired up. That gets me up early. That keeps me up late right there. That's cool. Yeah. I get goosebumps. I'm fired up right now. Let's go. All right, Thomas, same sort of questioning. You've dedicated your life to doing what you do with local first and, and, uh, there's the time you spend at your job. I know the energy, mental, physical, everything that you put in, it's not just your job and what you're doing to, to grow this organization and, and not just the organization, but like, it's kind of like, it's like a, a rock star cause or like, there's this <laughs> thing behind it, right? Like, why do you do that? I've heard you kind of speak to it sometimes, but what do you, why do you care? Yeah. So back to your rock star comment. I always, when I think of organizations, like try to put them in a genre. And if I was to put local first airs on a genre, we'd definitely be punk rock. hundred <laughs> percent. I love it. We joke about that sometimes internally, but you're absolutely right. This is not a job for me. This is, I have found my purpose in, in what I want to do in the world. And that is uh, giving power to the powerless and, and reminding people that, you know, what we see every day through the massive marketing budgets of these large companies that are being thrown in our face are not actually going to get us the things that we want in the long term. And so when I think about why, why do I even do this? It's, it's, it's not even, why do I, it's, it's, this has to be done. There's such a sense of urgency to me for social justice in this realm of work that, I mean, I read and I, and I look every day at how much richer the rich are getting and the gap of inequality and inequity in society. And without this work being done, there's less people fighting for those at the most of the time, the bottom that don't have any resources or anyone else helping and fighting for them. And, you know, when I see successful companies in the world that are doing things that are profit focused and, and not focused on building great communities. And then I see businesses that are literally, you know, just struggling to put food on the table for their families because we have built a country where you should be able to start a business and, be successful and not have to make a million dollars. And if you want to build a great company that expands and builds and hires more people, you should be able to do that too. But maybe not everybody wants to do that. And we need to ensure that people have the equitable opportunity to go down the path that they would like to and desire to with the resources that are in front of them. And so I do this because it is necessary. I do this because there's really not another option. I could not sleep at night knowing that the state that I love and the community that I love and and am committed to is surrendering itself to the man. So I'll put it that way. (laughs) Yeah. I heard you, so you use a word that I use frequently, and we're talking about the, the purpose of Max 6. We're essentially a real estate company, right? Mm-hmm. Rent space out to people. We have four walls. It's about building community. It's advocating capitalism as a force for good. Why do we do that? Because we think businesses can create so much value for people and people to make their own way. And, and as long as there's a uh, set of rules that they aren't beholden to some other set of rules by some big 
organization or government or whatever it be. I think the word opportunity is something that you guys are both so focused on. And that's a big word for me because it's not just capitalism. It's not just business. It's not just elimination of extreme, abject, what, relative poverty, whatever you want to call it. It's not just education. It's opportunity. And I think that's the three of our organizations. That's something that, what am I thinking? What's the tie together that, that we provide to people? Opportunity to pull yourself out of your own way to mm-hmm. give yourself the ability to do whatever you want in this world to mm-hmm. do the same thing for yourself for your business or whatever but to shine in this culture or whatever like so what what do you guys think about that opportunity i mean is that really what it is is that what you guys are providing for people is it i mean it, there's education there's mm-hmm. there's all these different things but is it opportunity to be what you want and can be and should be able to have the oppor- or the choice to be given every one being equal yeah I think for me, absolutely. And in terms of the work that we do and the people and and organizations that we work with, it's all about opportunity. It's about limitless potential, limitless uh, ability. And and so oftentimes I, I believe that people people stand in their own way and the opportunities, um, are passed on to somebody else that's, you know, there and willing to say yes to something where, um, the self-doubt, the the lack of confidence, the what will other people think, the, you know, whatever it is, living in the past, you know, the believing whatever story that they heard about themselves or their abilities by that one person, that one time that's now become the 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 tape that's playing over and over and in their head. You know, when you start eliminating that and getting the the the, the garbage part out and putting new thoughts and new ideas and thinking bigger and and creating different actions so that you have different habits so that you then get the results you want. That's that's what it's all about. So when you start to, in, in, at least in the space I'm in, when when people start realizing, wow, these opportunities have been there, I just haven't seen them because I've been so blocked by my own thinking or my own you know limiting beliefs. Wow, when you clear out all that clutter and chatter, whoo where did all these opportunities come from? It's like, well, you just, it's a different perspective, perspective, different lens you're looking at the world through. So. That's cool. Yeah. So I consider you a rock star too, Jody. Hey, thanks. You, I know I was thinking, you, I'm like, I don't think we're punk what, rock. No, I think, I think we're pop. <laughs> pop. I think we're pop. Okay. Yep. Pop yep. We're pretty damn fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So thank you guys for uh, diving into what you do, why it matters, why you care, why you do it. Let's get into, uh, the meat of uh, the purpose of this show anyways, yes. which is talking about fuck ups mm-hmm. and, and how do we learn from it and share with others that are trying or that are doing <laughs> other, oh, man, Jody, you're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> we don't try, we, we do. do. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. We don't use that three letter word ever, ever, ever. <laughs> uh, so we can show other people that are creating opportunities for their stakeholder group. Uh, how do we, not do the same fuck up or learn from it or yeah. how do we build you know more success so I'd like you to each take a big sip nice cheers cheers it's time for us to get real and raw mm-hmm. and so i'll ask you guys who'd like to go first telling the tale of your biggest fail Ooh, what do you think i can go rock paper scissors i'm teasing go for I it can go. go for it i'm not necessarily sure this is my absolutely biggest fail i'm gonna tell a big fail but I mean, who knows what your biggest one is. My biggest fail was centering personal well-being over purpose, young in my career. As I was uh, finishing college, I found myself really, really good at sales. And I was working for a company I won't name. And uh, I had the opportunity to work from home because I was doing so well, number one at the company. And... I mean, for a college student, I was banking in. Like, I could not believe the paychecks I was getting. Like, it was nice. I was like, this is it. Like, <clears throat> I'm finishing college and I'm already doing so well. Like, I'm totally going to be good. But I started to become more and more miserable. <clears throat> I was becoming more and more unhappy. And I spent uh, a lot of time, even with the people that I would communicate with through this job, um, just not being the best person. And I found myself three months from graduation quitting my job because I just told myself, if I'm going to do what I want to do, whatever that is, or be the person I want to be, I just need to get out of this. And so my biggest fail 
transitioned into one of the best decisions I ever made in my life, which was to on the spot quit that job. And from there, I went on um, the website to a local organization here and applied immediately and was hired 10 days later. And my first day on the job met my now wife. I worked there for eight months um, and afterwards moved to New Jersey for five months and had an awesome experience right after college living in New York and, and working for a Medicare company there. I traveled around a bit and went to Houston and did some searching of careers and that kind of stuff. And then found myself yearning to come back home because I got to visit all these great places. I mean, I <clears throat> am so privileged to be able to like live in New York city for over, you know, not just visit New York city for five days, but live there for a good solid five months and like get to know the neighborhoods and live in a place like Houston that's up and coming and growing. And, you know, I did these really cool things straight out of, out of school. Um, but I felt this call to come back home and, and invest in the place that I had always loved. And so it's, a, it's a kind of a string of things, but it, it landed with me failing myself in thinking that, you know, bringing home good paychecks and good money would bring fulfillment. When after two years of doing that, it brought just a lot of unsettledness and unhappiness. And it led me to realizing that, which thankfully I did and getting out of that, which led to my current career, my current place in life. And, um, and all worked out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. More than okay. Current career, current place in in life, current wife. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's all good. Awesome. So I have two lines of question I'm thinking. Uh, One is, so, all right. So you went through an experience where you sort of were blinded by the, what's happening right now. Yeah. I'm seeing this success. I'm seeing this, the money's coming, whatever, you know, Mm -hmm. and you learned from that to sort of broaden your perspective on the long term what do you think got you to that place were you was it just a it feels good right now and Mm. so let's let's reciprocate that or do you think you were you we you know like are brought Mm. up in this like that's what we should expect that's what we're going after Mm. probably a little bit of both um my parents so one thing one thing that I've always known I'm really good at is working hard. (laughs) And I know that sounds really weird. And people would always ask me, well, what are you good at working hard at? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Like everybody, anybody can work hard, but that's not true. (laughs) Every interview I've ever been in, people would always ask, what's your number one skill? Working hard. I will work my ass off until the job is done. I will work smart and hard, you know? And so my parents always tell a story. I was two and a half years old and they didn't know where I was. And they found me in the backyard raking leaves and putting them into a bag. I was cleaning the yard. I get two and a half years old. I don't know. <laughs> and so I um, have always had inside of me this, uh, ten, I don't know, this piece of me that always just like goes after things and 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 works really, really hard at them. Um, but it wasn't until I matched that hard work with purpose that life made sense, like that things actually really made sense and molded together. It's like if you have one thing but not the other, you know, you don't have the perfect recipe uh, for success, right? And and you you can talk about that in many different terms in many different ways. But personally for me, like I always had this hard work, but I was working really hard at things that didn't matter, like working hard in jobs that didn't fulfill me, working really hard at things that did not lead me to better things. And until I matched that up with what I cared about, when I was able to do that and figure that out, it was like, this is it, you know, and now I'm able to break down mountains and, 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 and build and build and do more things and build relationships and, and cultivate the things that I actually want to do. So, yeah. Second question with that then is having, oh, cheers. 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 Yeah, cheers. Yeah, cheers. Gotcha. Cheers. <laughs> Having been there, learned from it, being in a place now that feels a lot better, you're seeing greater results as you, you're pairing those two things. The, yeah. the, uh, the I call it the horsepower of a for-profit with the heart of a non-profit is kind of how I think about mm-hmm. conscious capitalism or these two sort of pairing yeah. things together. Do you take time now situationally or, or uh, time by time or as it goes by to think about this and where like am I still needing to like the third eye concept I've got this sort of I pull myself out of my head looking from the mezzanine yeah. you can see up here because you've realized that our tendency is to get in our heads mm-hmm. 
Yes. <laughs> and it's it's difficult. The difficult piece of that to do is because once you do pair those those things that help you find your purpose and and help you do the work that you know you're you're here to do, things move so fast. And it's not I mean, you could call it life, you could call it this, you call it that, whatever, but when you're in that moment and you're so on fire and you're just plugging away, it's hard to take a breath and stop and get off working, working without thinking and just doing and going and and taking a look down at how things are and assessing like, because personally for me over the past six years, you know, I, I feel like, you know, I've become a leader in this community. I've built relationships with other leaders in this community, developing yourself um, within that while charging forward and getting work done is something that needs healthy assessment because you can continue to make more fuck ups if you do not stop. <laughs> I know. Think <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think it, I mean, as a young person, a very young person, I would say, who's uh, become a leader in, in Arizona, at least right now, and the very little that I feel that I've done, I try as often as I can to take a real assessment at, at what I'm doing and who I'm working with and, and how I can be working better rather than just working hard. Yeah. So I'll say, I'll tell you, man, from Max Six's perspective and from my perspective, and I'm relatively young leader as well, but I've been proud to have our brand tied with not just Local First, but you and mm. seeing you develop as a leader in Aww. the community. It's been, it's been awesome to see. And, and it's going to be, you know, we'll all fuck up and we'll all pause yeah. and take our time and learn from it or whatever. But <laughs> yeah. it's, yeah, absolutely. Thanks, awesome. man. Yeah. It's awesome. Jody, the biggest one. Your turn. Oh my! I can think of a good few, but the two that come to mind are around the same premise, and so it's it has to do with trust. And uh, for me, I had a I had a business partner, and then I had a spouse, and both of those uh, relationships ended up not working out. And when I look at the fails of both of those, um, I inherently am am such a trusting person, to, almost to a fault. Um, and it's the whole, you know, don't mistake my kindness for weakness kind of a thing. I have a dear friend who, after my divorce and after my business split up, you know, 10 years ago, had asked me or said to me, Jody, you know, you live life and, and it's hard because we're, you know, on air, we don't have a, a video here, but she, she kind of put her arms back um, as almost like sticking her chest out and said, you know, you live life like this, you know, you're, you know, just come at me, you know, whatever it takes all in. And you keep getting screwed by people. Like you keep getting hurt, you know? And she's like, I live a lot more like this. And she kind of crossed her arms and she's like, because that way you can kind of deflect the arrows a little bit more. And maybe you should really kind of consider taking a little bit more precaution in, in being as trusting and open as you are, because, you know, I think people take advantage of your kindness. And I thought about that. And that really, that, that sat with me because I was like, oh, you know, there, there's some truth to what she's saying, because yeah, I mean, I, I kind of feel sometimes where I'm sort of pulling arrows out one after the other. And as I thought about her words, I quickly realized that no, that's so inauthentic to who I am. And I would rather keep pulling arrows out and have the opportunity to learn and grow from that than live an inauthentic life where it was playing it safe. And from each of those relationships not working and from there being a, you know, an untrust, a, a distrust that had happened, I learned so much from it. And it made me a stronger leader. It made me a stronger speaker. It made me realize that in order to help other people, I have to go through those experiences myself. And I, I joke, you know, my, my business started on the heels of my divorce. And I, I joke that it was the best gift in the ugliest wrapping paper. You know, it's like, it was horrific, yet I can't imagine, I, I would do it all over again, not just for my two amazing daughters, which was the biggest gift, but I am living the absolute, I, I have no question in my mind, I'm doing exactly the work that I was put on this earth to do without question. And when I get up in the morning, it's exciting and it's fun. And yes, it's tiring and overwhelming and uh, it's all of those things. It's, it's the rush of entrepreneurship and I wouldn't change a thing. And that's what it stems down to. So, so the fails for me had to do with trusting implicitly, yet I wouldn't change a thing about it because I've learned way too much from it. So let me ask you on that. I have the same 
but it, is it an issue? Like, I, I wouldn't have it any other way, too. Right. But I right. like this is things I talk about with my team. Is yeah. I trust implicitly, and you can get burned by it. Mm-hmm. I've been burned by it. Yep. How do you do? You put systems around you. Do you? I mean, like, you don't want to be in a situation where it's just I know I'm going to get burned a certain yeah. percent of the time because or. But, but I'd never think that because I don't think I'm ever going to get burned because I'm so trusting. Right, it's right, like, right. Uh, is it people you surround yourself with? Is it just an acknowledgement of kind of how it is? Or is it just a, I have faith in humanity and this will work out more often than it won't? Yeah, I think a lot of it for me is just very gut gut related. Um, I think, you know, just the, I think there's more awareness. You know, I I, I really look at people's intention. Um, I, I believe that people really are by and large, meant for good and and mean well, and their intention is pure and good. And that's not everyone. And I get that. But I want to go into any encounter with another human being believing that in my core um, until or unless proven otherwise. So that's always my thought going into a relationship. I, I think there's a gut piece for me where it's like, hmm, this isn't feeling quite right. Or maybe maybe their intention isn't the same as mine. So I think I have more of an awareness around it. I don't think I'm more cautious in terms of I'm a, I'm a pretty big risk taker. So I don't know that I'm more cautious necessarily, but I'm more aware. I think that's that's the easiest way I could frame it up is it's just being more aware, more alert. Entrepreneur risk taker. Yeah. <laughs> my favorite quote is leap and the net will appear. So if that, if that gives you any idea of my personality. Ready, shoot, aim. <laughs> exactly. Whatever it takes. <laughs> so I was just thinking listening to both of you talk and from the earlier uh, discussion on Arizona and about why you guys care individually and about the businesses you work with, and about the people you serve. This is off the cuff, so I have no idea how that's going to go. But <laughs> if you were thinking about both of you have strong visions for what you want the outcome of your work to do, to make people happier, to have more opportunity, to be able to pull myself up in this economy, in this world, to whether that be individually as myself, as a father, husband, individual, as a business leader, as an employee, whatever that is. In 50 years, we're 2069 in Arizona. We're sitting, well, someone's sitting here. Mm -hmm. What does it look like that we've been successful? Yeah. First of all, I'm 96 at that point, which is really, really scary. Um, <laughs> With much wisdom. Right, right. But I will yes. still be here, dang it. <laughs> um, for me, I would say if it's 50 years from now and there's there are businesses or people that can still reflect even generationally and say, you know, I, it, there was a defining moment in my life. There was an activity, a process, a class, a program that I went through, and it was in that moment I decided to do this differently. If there's anyone on the planet left to say that from based on something they experienced at Unimprove, then my work was was done. Yeah. Awesome. That was a great answer. Cheers. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <clears throat> so... Three years ago, we had a staff retreat at Local First. And we said, in 30 years, what does Arizona look like if we're successful? Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> the list. <laughs> Everything from, like, no stray dogs. <laughs> wow. No, but, like, our team is so passionate about the work that we do. It's it's not just about the economic benefit of Arizona's economy, but of the people in Arizona that we want this community to thrive and be great, right, as a result of the work. So really, really what we're about is 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 building wealth for the community. And if the community has wealth for itself, it can create and do the things that it should want and be able to do without um, needing um, um, things from larger entities outside, right? And, and we've seen so much of that extraction over the years that um, we're now almost reliant on a lot of those big businesses. So if I was to say in, in 50 years, what does success look like or, or what does our work look like at that time? It's in a world where it's, I see so many struggles for people to maintain their businesses and things. I, a lot of success stories, a lot of awesome people doing awesome things, but 
also a, a lot of challenges out there. I'd want to I'd want to see communities that uh, have turned from being outward focused, just global economy focused and cheaper and and convenience and automation back internally to realizing the only thing that works is if we rely on each other. And and I would see across communities, community spaces where people come to, you know, not infrastructure where the businesses are turned in away from the street, but out to the street where neighborhoods that you can walk and visit a business and you know the person that owns that business because they live in your neighborhood and they source goods and services from other people that live within five miles. I would see farms, local farms thriving and growing and building. I would see us embracing our diverse cultures rather than being more segmented and divisive as, as I feel like we are a lot right now. And I would see people coming together. That's what I would see in 50 years. Oh, I wish we had another hour for this conversation. <laughs> <Let's>, <I'll, laughs> quickly, so I can jump on this real quick, because you just lit me up. <laughs> the big corner training room, we call it. The big, you could fit 100 people in there yeah. that's 20 feet away. When we were looking at building out this 10,000 square feet of space, and that's a tenth, you know, whatever it is. That is the most important space that we have in this space. And that is the reason we built this out because the institutions that are gathering places in community are going away, whether you believe in them or not, or whatever the, the uh, people get, getting on the soapbox and boxing, being able to have, you know, respectful discord conversation, the uh, church, whatever, like yeah. these things are going away in community and being able to have a place where you can gather there's no expectation of anything out of one another, but we're coming together. Being in one of your courses, Jody, and being like the hard times of there's no blind spots compared to the connectivity of the 20 people in that room and being truly connected to people, not across a screen, but looking eyeball to eyeball and like being at the Good Business Summit with all of these people who are coming together for one purpose one cause of supporting this community and all of our communities together i think that's i can't say enough about that of like that i would love to see that continue to uh come back into our communities as well as these sort of people gathering well that's a i think that's a testament to what you guys are doing here in the space of max six like you you've built a business focused on relationships not transactions mm -hmm. um you i mean i've stepped into chain restaurants here and there like along the way and i am shocked that it's like moving away from service to tablet service like i mean it's you pay at your table on a computer now you know it's crazy and the thing that you what you guys are doing is you're not you haven't built a transactional space where it's like you pay x dollars a month and you got you know your table and computer and an outlet and that's what we got and if you don't like it you can go somewhere else i know that if i'm in the area i can text you or jen and be like hey i've got an hour and a half and i've had all the coffee i can have today and <laughs> <laughs> i can't work from a coffee shop because i'm not going to buy anything can i pop in and just have a space i know i can text you guys and say can i have a board meeting there in three weeks because the other place just pulled out of us you have built a space that is based on relationships and based on community and you've made real sense that that community space doesn't just have to be food or, or 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 a place where people come to eat and drink right it, it's a space where you come with the people that you want to be around mm -hmm. so to talk. kudos to you guys yeah so, absolutely we, cheers we do have, we do have good coffee <laughs> we do have good coffee and cider. <laughs> and cider yes this is fantastic i'm going to give props to the uh crush craft uh prickly pear yeah. that i am enjoying because it is fabulous it's nice, delightful. <laughs> and, fabulous and gluten-free which i love <laughs> Okay, so I think we are about out of time. I wish we had, uh, you know what, we the three of us, four of us know each other. We have as much time as we have on this earth together to keep this conversation up. But, Absolutely. Uh, and we will. But uh, this was amazing. And so let's share with any of the listeners how we can find you guys. Uh, Jody, where can we find you? 
and you would improve? What's the best, best way to get in contact, social media? Yeah, certainly. I mean, LinkedIn, Facebook, all of those those obvious ones. Um, my email address is Jody, J-O-D-I, at youandimprove.com. And that's spelled the letter U, always the letter U, uh, and A-N-D, and then improved.com. So Jody at youandimprove.com. And Thomas? Thank you. Much love. Yeah. Uh, everyone, uh, how can they find you? The same thing. Yeah. Localfirstaz.com, a uh, directory of over 3,500 Arizona businesses that you can shop at and source from. You can find my contact info on that page um, of our team page of that website. Um, but we're on all social media. I am too. Love to have some fun on Twitter um, <laughs> if you guys want to interact. But um, Local First is pretty active doing great things there too. So, yeah. So I'll read our outro, but I just want to say thank you guys. This was a ton of fun, yeah. and I respect the shit out of both of you guys as like, <laughs> Likewise, leaders and, and running this community thank and giving you. people opportunities. So we hope you've enjoyed hearing from our latest fuck-ups and are inspired by their tenacity to push through and make it happen. We'd like to thank our sponsors, Conscious Capitalism Arizona, Max 6, Phoenix Business Radio X, Crush Craft Cider, and Lyft. Remember to keep your fuck-ups in the boardroom and not on the road. Drink responsibly. <laughs> 